there, I'm Casey. And I'm Corey. Yeah, we are the Wright Brothers. I'd like to welcome you to our February podcast. That's right. Can you believe that Super Bowl game? Oh man, that was amazing. Uh, I can't believe the team won. Yeah, we're actually filming this before the Super Bowl, but I'm sure it will have been a great game. Um, one other reminder is February. Gentlemen, go make your Valentine's Day reservations. Don't want to forget that. That's right. Absolutely. So this month we're actually going to be exploring a computer buying guide in 2008. Yeah, you know, this was one of our most uh, popular podcasts last year, and so I think we're going to actually make this an annual thing. I mean, there's so much that changes in terms of the technology that's available and the technology that should be expected from consumers, and that's sort of what we're going to get into today. Exactly. We'll catch you up on what's what's going on right now, what's the hot computer, what's the hot specs to look for, and we're also kind of walking through the thought process that we go through whenever we buy a new computer. So, ton of great information. Let's dive in. All right, Core, why don't you kick us off? What is the first step in buying a computer? The first step really is just to define your needs. You need to figure out what are going to be the major uses of your computer and start to make a list of the things that you're going to do and we can start to build a profile of the computer that is going to be ideal for you. Right, and I think this really speaks to an important point which is that there is no best computer. There is no perfect computer. There's the perfect computer for your use and the only way you can find that perfect computer for your use is by first defining your use. So make a list of the top five or six things you're going to be doing in order. If you're going to be doing email the most frequently, that should be at the top of your list. If you're going to be doing video editing not as frequently, you put that towards the bottom of your list. They're both important, but you need to find the computer that's going to serve your specific interest. All right, Corey, so you've built the profile for your computer. You know exactly what you want it to do. What's the next step? Uh, the next step is to find out, uh, find a computer that's going to have the tools that's going to allow you to do the things that you want to do. Okay, well, I know specs can get kind of complicated, so walk us through this. What are the important specs on a computer? Well, there's four main ones that we'll talk about in this phase. Uh, the first one is the processor, which essentially is the brain of the computer. This is what is going to allow you, your computer to run and do all the things you need it to do for the duration of the time that you plan on having it. Now the main thing to point here is that the processor is pretty much the one spec that's not upgradable after you buy your computer. So the more you plan on using your computer and the longer you plan on having it, the more importance you want to place on the processor of your computer. Right. Now explain to us what should you be looking for in a processor? What's sort of the bare minimum here? Um, you're looking at right now, uh, Intel pretty much has a stranglehold in the industry. You're going to find either Intel or an AMD chip most likely. Um, stick with Intel, I would recommend. Um, look for a dual core processor up to a quad core processor on a laptop. And on a desktop, start at quad core processors and go up to your eight core processors as well. Okay, great. Well, why don't you walk us through the next category, random access memory or RAM. What does that uh, mean? This is the memory of your computer. This is what allows you to do the multitasking in your computer. So when you open programs, the faster that they open, uh, when you switch between programs and the more programs you have running, um, if your computer starts to freeze or get slow, the more you do that, it's because you don't have enough memory. So um, you want to make sure that you have the more, more multitasking you plan on doing, the more memory you're going to want to have. Okay, so what should you be looking for here? I mean, what's the bare minimum? Well, the good news is that memory is a very upgradable part of your computer. Um, I'd say with laptops, start at one gigabyte of RAM. Um, get two if, it's, if you know you're going to be using it more. You can always upgrade that. Um, I'd say with desktop, Tops, start at two gigs and go up to um, three or four and once again it's very upgradable. Okay now for those of us for those out there that are watching and saying wait a second you can upgrade RAM how do you do that how hard is that? Um, it's not very tough at all um, if you know how to use a computer you can do it yourself or open up a computer if you've ever done it both on a desktop and a laptop it's just an expansion port um, that you can very easily do if you needed help doing that you can buy the chip take it into Best Buy or your, t or your computer guy and they can do it very easily for you. Um, money wise you're looking at probably about seventy five to eighty dollars per gig of RAM that you want to upgrade after you buy your computer. So again, very inexpensive. Correct. Now talk to us about hard drive, sort of the third spec here. Uh, well, this is, your hard drive is essentially the storage of your computer. The more things you plan on storing, the, more hard, the, more, the bigger hard drive you're going to, going to want to get. Now we're talking about your files, uh, we're talking about your programs, we're talking about any pictures, uh, songs, videos that you want to start to put onto your computer. The more you plan on doing, the more storage you want to have. Okay, now great. Now what should you be looking for here in storage? Um, it depends how much you're going to want to do. Now all files are not created equally, so um, a text file will be a lot less storage than any sort of multimedia. Uh, certainly if you plan on doing more multimedia, you're going to want to get more storage, but I would say on a, on a laptop, start at about 120 gigs and go up from there. Um, and when you're talking about a desktop, look for anywhere between 200 and go up from there. Once again, this is something that's very easy to upgrade if you ever need more storage, um, both internally and externally from your computer. So um, I'd say those would be the minimums though. 
Okay, now we sort of have one final category here, which you sort of titled Others. Explain to us what you mean by this. Uh, well, I think what it's important to note is that your computer doesn't just work within a vacuum. That uh, There's actually other devices that your computer is going to be working with. We're talking about printers, we're talking about routers, uh, we're talking of course about cameras and digital uh, video cameras. All these different things that your computer is going to be working with, you want to make sure that it can facilitate those devices. Uh, make sure it has the inputs that it needs to do that. If you're looking to do it via Bluetooth or wireless internet, make sure it can handle that. That. Those are both pretty standard nowadays. Um, and then also, the more devices that you plan on putting into it, if you're plugging in a printer and you're plugging in a router, um, and then you want to be able to use your digital camera and, and uh, your phone as well to plug in, make sure it's got enough inputs for all those as far as USB, as far as FireWire. And then lastly, consider your uh, anything that you might want to do optically. And we're talking about CD or DVD wise. So if you're looking to burn or watch DVDs, make sure it has those capabilities. That, those are the types of things that fall into the other category. Okay, great. Well, we've taken a pretty uh, comprehensive look at specs. Let's dive into the next category. All right, so I think we have a pretty good idea now of the computer that we're looking for. Now it's time to start shopping it. What's the first step? Well, I think the first step, and there's not really any magic answers here, but you need to start assembling a list of the computers that fit into your criteria. And this means you're going to go to your standard websites, you know, your gateway providers, you know, Dell, Toshiba, Sony, Best Apple. Best Buy. Yeah, Best Buy, Circuit City, any of the places that sell computers or manufacture computers. Go take a look at their options and print off anything that really fits in line with those specs that we identified in the previous step. After this, you should have a pretty good list of maybe five or seven computers that really fit your criteria, and then you can start moving on to the next step, which is starting to enlist the support, ideas, reviews of people who have actually held and dealt with this computer. Now, you might be lucky. You might have friends or family members that have or have um, experienced the exact computer that you're thinking about buying. If that's the case, certainly ask them what it's like, ask them what their experience has been, or at the very least, ask them what their experience has been with that vendor. But the other thing you can do if you're not that fortunate is you can go online you can start to uh, solicit the advice of online friends and family, sort of the user reviews on that computer. So if you're at a BestBuy.com and you find that computer that really works for you, well there's going to be several reviews of people who have actually held, touched, and worked with that computer talking about their experience with that computer. And in this step, you can really start to find out some of those little um, issues that might, that might sort of those hidden issues that might come up with the computer. And those are the things that you look at in the next step which is test driving the computer. And this is the final, I think the most important step in terms of buying a computer, test drive it. Feel it in your hands. What is it like? And the way you do this is once you have your list, you whittle it down maybe to three or five computers that are your real finalist. Now you want to find where these are at the store. So, you know, say you find a Dell computer. Well, you want to find, you know, a Circuit City that has that exact Dell computer. Go in and feel it. Type on it. Move the mouse around. Put a CD in the CD tray. Watch a movie on the, on the cinema display. Make sure that everything is going to fit in line. Make sure everything feels right. It sits right. And then you can really make sure that you have a computer that not only meets your needs and fits your specs, but really fits with who you are personally. So we start to shop online. Hopefully we can get it to five to seven. We can check out and list the help of experts and other users, get it down to three or five, and then that's when you go into the store. You test drive it, you hold it, you look at it, you feel it, and that's when you can get the one that you're looking for. Absolutely. Now, one thing that we're talking about, now you've got the one, um, the more patient you can be with this entire process, the longer you can take, the more models you can see, um, the longer you can wait and look for price shopping, the better you're off you're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is something I really always encourage somebody that once you've found the model, the exact computer you want, wait a couple weeks before you buy it. And, and check in on the website, see if they have any deals coming up, check on um, competing vendors. And, I, and I've, every single time I've encouraged somebody to do this, they've saved at least a couple hundred bucks in doing it. So I think it's a really good idea. Certainly. So the more patient you are in your search, the better deals you're going to find. You're not only going to find that perfect computer, but you're going to find it at the perfect price. So we'd like to thank you for joining us in this version of your computer buying guide. And hopefully, you'll watch us next, next month on your new computer.